It's episode 95, y'all, only five away from the big 100. And we wanted to bring the boys together and talk about those things that make us tick when we hunt elk. Look, y'all, there are lots of successful, incredible elk hunters out there, each of them with different styles and strategies and techniques. Plenty of people to learn from. So listen, learn, and soak up everything you can. But for our 95th episode, and coming straight from your elk hunting coach staff, it's the Elk Bros Playbook, the simplified, amplified, and verified versions from each of us on how we hunt elk. Our expectations, beliefs, and what we know to be absolutely the truth. So snap on that seatbelt, y'all, and let's ride. It's going to be one for the books. Those topics, along with our Elk Bros shout outs. So my friends, pull up a chair, adjust your volumes just right, and welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting, brought to you by ElkGrows.com, with your host Gilbert Arnellis and elk hunting coach Joe Gillian. You want to hunt elk? And they live to hunt elk. Their goal is to share with you what they have learned grinding it out for over 35 seasons doing what they love. So come on into camp and set a spell. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunters. Hello there, everyone. If it's your first time with us, glad to have you. Hope you enjoy the show. And for those blue collar hunters following our show and grinding it out with us every week, welcome back to Elk Camp. I'm Gilbert Ornelas coming to you from Spring, Texas, the host of your show, and from Cimarron, New Mexico, your elk hunting coaches, Joe Gillia and Leroy Chav Chavez. Hey, hey. Uh, Hola. It's, uh, Hola. It, it's separating for the sake of all mankind in two different parts of Texas, that's for sure. It's the Latin Assassins, the boys from Venezuela, the brothers from another mother, and the controversial leaders of the Elk Bros Venezuelan Mafia in the house, Luis Gonzalez and Manano Grata. <laughs> That's What's right. Up, fellas? That's right. Yeah, you say Luis Gonzalez first. That's the way it's supposed to be introduced. So yeah, I, we I saved agree. the best Thank for you. Last. Hello, so everybody. It, it, it's it's a, it's a lot like uh, during warfare. You don't want to ever show your patches to show your true uh, uh, placement in in the military, so people don't aim for you. So if we keep saying you guys in different points, nobody knows who the we're not in the field. We're not in the field. <laughs> I, can wear, I can wear my attire. Hey, you know? hey, but these guys were in the field. They Ooh. were in the field, man. That's right. And uh, and and I'm gonna let you talk about this because. Look, I got an email. Shane Rasmussen's out there. Shane, I hope you're listening, man. I get an email from <laughs> Shane. And, uh, and, and Eric, Eric Aragon from Las Cruces had sent in an email saying with a, with a link to a video. <laughs> and he says, I think it, the Venezuelan leader ought to be, uh, ought to be figured out by in this <clears throat> method. This is the way we should do that. And it was Russian slap fighting, right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I get an email from Shane and I forward this to Shane and say, what do you think? And he's like, well, that's pretty good. But really, I think what we should do to really certify who the leader is, is to have both guys shoot their bows 30 yards Taught three arrows and best score wins, but I don't it know. It already happened I, though. That I, already took place this weekend. <laughs> no contest. I mean, there's it's just not even a point of having that conversation because I'll tell you what happened. I showed Manano that I was able because he he had he had issues and concerns about my my arrows, my new setup, and all that stuff. Well, oh, this this is your your uh, adult. Okay. The adult okay. Right. Okay. Right. But all all I got to say is <laughs> we should we should upload the videos. From this weekend, we're talking about the contest <laughs> of shooting the arrows no. to a target. No. Okay, I, I don't know. I think finish. I think an actual animal ought to say something. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. we can do that too. That's not fair. Targets don't move. We can do that too. Yeah, yeah, that that too. Yes, well, the sure. problem is that he shot at 30 yards, Beto, mm -hmm. and his arrow hit the ground like 15 yards before even getting to the target and went sideways, and we never found the arrow. <laughs> 30 yards. Uh, well, see, he, that just okay. proves that you go to show you, man. He gets good no, but, but, You can't find but, it. 
I, I beat it on purpose. Because <laughs> oh, I, you did it on purpose. <laughs> you, did it on purpose. <laughs> you did it on purpose. Yeah, now the I had comes a, out. Yeah, I had a curly arrow. I just wanted to get rid of that curly arrow. Yeah, and that's why I use it. That's but, exactly what I told him when we couldn't find it. Is like good riddance. What, what are you doing shooting a girly arrow? <laughs> I, just, I just wanted, I just wanted to get rid of that particular arrow. But I used my straight ones to kill a deer oh, oh, wait, and wait. to kill a big old hawk. Unbelievable hey, look, video, look, too, guys. Look, Fantastic. we're not, we're not sexual discriminate, discriminatory <laughs> on this podcast, man. You got straight arrows and girly arrows, man. This, yeah. this we're not gender specific on <laughs> our right, arrows. That's right, man. We're, we're, not, <clears throat> we're that. not going Caitlyn Jenner here on our arrows. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, we might have to do something to make that. Uh, we might have to make that happen. Get put that video together, man. And we'll have the. We can make it happen. Yeah. Oh, the, we, the leader we, shoot we, off, right? Yeah, we should upload at least a deer. Uh, the deer after I shot him, it, it went thirteen yards. This is so Just unbelievable. Thirteen yards I mean, and went. Amazing shot. Hey man, I, I gotta t I gotta give it up to you boys. Y'all getting better and better every. I, I told y'all. Uh, everybody out there, get ready. Buckle up. Mafia Outdoors is on its way. Uh, <laughs> these two Latin fellas are the real deal. Uh, I've been hunting with a lot of guys in my life, and these guys are actual assassins with a bow in their hands, man. It was so cool to watch that video that Luis shot. It was definitely camera A stuff of Manano getting <laughs> after it and putting a big old uh, Texas – Red River Whitetail on his keister, man. And I mean, yeah. there was no tracking allowed. Yeah. And for oh, you guys. unbelievable the, shot. For our listeners, we better make sure we kind of pull them into that inside joke because you always hear us talking about camera A, camera B. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gilbert's even thrown in <laughs> camera C. And, and what it is is when we're on our Elk Bros hunt, you know, we talk about who is the best cameraman, who's doing the camera A work, and who's doing the camera B work, and I guess the worst work is camera C. And when when we went out there for our first year, Manano was the man. I mean, Manano on the camera. I mean, he okay, was, okay, was okay. the man, you know? Joe, 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 please <laughs> stop, stop right there. <laughs> you Manano, know, Manano doesn't you know, learn. Dude, you don't okay. interrupt somebody when okay. they're talking no, no, good no, about no, you, bro. No, you got to no, learn no, that. Please, when somebody's no, but, talking good about you, uh, yeah. you don't no, interrupt Joe. them. He wants Joe. me to stop with Manano was the man. You want me to stop right no, there? No, yeah. no, you, exactly. use, you, use, you use past tense. Manano was. <laughs> I like what you say. Hey, I had Manano as my cameraman this year. He did a phenomenal job. I can did. Passed. Yeah, did. Yes, yes. I got I, I got Lewis's bull. I got what? Uh, what? what? Whoa, Louis. wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Let's run this. The let's first one. The first one. Oh, the no first doubt. one. The that year may before, be one of the best right? videos. In, 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 the, in the year past, before, but I, but I, in the past tense, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I got this year, I got Beto's bull, and Luis didn't get anything this this this, this one. <laughs> It's very true. I'm not even gonna, not even gonna say anything. I don't about. know. <laughs> it's just now, based on who, results. Who, well, Manano, who got your bull on video this year? Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thank at, you. At at what? Well, fifteen yeah. yards. Who yeah. got the well, well, it yeah, was a, huh? that, it was no, a no, coincidence. No, no, no. It was what? a coincidence. <laughs> the, yeah, that, he was there. That <laughs> is <laughs> exactly. I was there in, in the me. moment, ready oh. to shoot when it was important, not all on the phone. All I can say <laughs> is, man, that is incredible video. Because yeah, you got a picture of of Gilbert shooting his bow, but we never saw the animal we just saw i mean i i thought it was all staged bro i thought you were like Gilbert, put your hands up in the oh, air. come on man that right? was real in the moment no, <laughs> it wasn't a stage moment but, hey but, <laughs> right, but, but no, on no. hey on luis's video bro i can see a manano graterone and i can yeah. see a beast walking in on him it looks like five yards away yeah it was cool. I mean, yeah. it is it was close 
It was really close. And, and in slow mo, you see the arrow going yep. into the bull yeah. animal. Yeah. Yeah. You even yeah. see when he messes up and draws, and then his knock comes out of the arrow, and then he has to. <laughs> oh, no, but that was cool hand Luke, man. That no, was yeah. a testament to a cool hand Luke right yeah. there. Yeah. But you, so. I mean, you wouldn't have caught that if it wasn't for camera A over here. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Hey, and look, right. he actually caught the draw and he caught the release of the arrow, and you actually hear it's really cool you actually hear the animal get hit with the arrow it's like <laughs> i mean it is awesome man that was so cool hey and we can't the say same thing, the some same thing for the whitetail he just shot this yeah. past weekend that, it was an okay video so for you for for all of our listeners out there i think they understand camera a b c camera a b and c now yeah, man. Yeah, we got it camera man. a is louise camera b <laughs> is being debated between joe and Beto. Well, okay. camera c okay. is chav <laughs> yeah because okay. he hasn't been able to shoot anything yet and camera D <laughs> okay. will potentially be Manano one day. Okay, okay. Let me say this because I have some I have some leverage. I got some, I got some leverage. The first uh it was uh your first bull. Yeah. Because we haven't seen that video yet. Yeah. The video I took Oh no, we have, it's in the academy. No, but it's short. It, it's not the long video. Well, because it's got some issues. I mean, you, you got to do a lot of zoom in well, and zoom out. And then so when we're that, having a conversation, means, you're and filming and the couch. Wait a second. Uh, I, I, in all fairness, I want to mention there was no sound because you didn't turn the microphone on. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can put some music. Yo, yo. You're supposed to. You're supposed to tell, say anything. <laughs> hey, hey, bro, I'm just trying to be honest, man. Y'all didn't throw me back to camera C. I got to do all the calling, and I get thrown back to camera C, man. We, you just keep doing the calling. We, we'll fudge yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you, camera yeah, You stay there, yeah, brother. Yeah. You're doing great. You're doing good. <laughs> Doing, doing good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. right, Joe, hey, hey, this is really cool to let our listeners in on all this for uh -huh. sure, Joe. But, Joe, the countdown is getting tight, brother. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, dang all the rest of this mess. We're just five episodes away from number 100, Joe. And, wow. and, and, man, I tell you what, people have got to be feeling it, man. I mean, we yeah. got the full house tonight. They're getting, they're getting the full mojo from us out there. And, yeah. guys, listen, this is huge for us, man. This is huge for us. It's huge for blue-collar elk hunting. And, uh, y'all, we're going to want to really celebrate it up with a special show. So, on that show, we're going to talk about some possible changes coming to the show and what y'all can expect going forward in 2021. And you can, if if you got, you could see the the bros' faces on this man, their heads are spinning, going, "What's mm. possible changes yeah, coming up?" Y'all need to understand, Joe gets very mysterious about stuff like that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he keeps it tight to the vest. He ain't even yeah. tight. <laughs> yeah. Look, look, when we get there, we're going to be sharing special moments. We're going to have our favorite guests. Uh, we're going to share who those favorite guests were, our shout-outs, our favorite shout-outs, some grinders letters, as, as well as we're going to be having some giveaways, man. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to be giving away some Elk Bros gear. We're going to do some uh, – we're going to be giving away some free subscriptions to our academy. Um, we've got some other stuff coming from some other people. So Way I'm cool, really Joe. excited about that, man. And you if you haven't heard already – we're looking for two listeners, two y'all out there that want to join us on our 100th episode of Blue Collar Elk County. And if you want to do that, if you want to hang out with us, if you want to be a part of that mess you just heard, man, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's what you have to do. You're going to write in to info at elkgrows.com and tell us two things. And listen, you guys, we have been getting letters. And you people that have been yeah. writing in. Uh, uh, good ones. Oh, good they're one, by awesome. the way. We're not replying back to that yet. We're, we're not going to do that. We're, we're waiting and saving some of that. So we are getting your letters. And, man, we're just stoked by some of the stuff we're reading right now. But anybody else that wants to write in, here's what you got to do. First of all, tell us about your journey as an elk hunter. And your journey could... You know, tell us how 2020 was involved, but your journey might be just this year, it might be four years, it might be a <coughs> lifetime journey. And I mean, I, I've got some guys out there that 
we've been talking to on the phone, that we've been emailing back and forth, and there's some incredible stories, some great journeys, and, you know, each of us has a story, man, and uh, you don't have to send us a book. You know, you can tell us a story. You can tell us what has been your motivation and how your life has changed because of your elk hunting journey there. That's first of all. And secondly, you need to tell us why you would want to join us, the Elk Bros, <coughs> on our 100th episode. Why are you going to subject yourself to this? All right. So. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if you did or didn't punch your tag this year right. or if your hunt is still coming up we still will be selecting two grinders and giving gear to some of those others that are right in as well yeah we're going to pick so many of those and give some gear out right 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 also if any of you our listeners have a special topic that you would like for us to discuss on our 100th episode we would love to hear it remember send all letters and topic suggestions to info info at elkbros.com Guys, you know what time it is. Shut it's time for a Elk Road shout out. New to our show, we usually <clears throat> send shout outs to a few cities with the most listeners topping our charts this week. Yep. And first of all, Elk Road shout out to those grinders giving us some incredible reviews on Apple Podcasts. Jonathan Ledford, man, another country boy that moved to Elk Country. He went from Louisiana. Up there to Utah, Salt Lake City, wow. Utah, man. Jonathan, thanks, bud. And B. Vickers, who has been wearing out the podcast for the last month. These guys gave okay. us some great reviews on there. First up, mm -hmm. we got, uh, it was established in 1845. This city is known for its German Texas heritage, and it's the third fastest growing city in the nation. A large group of German immigrants on their way to Indianola, Texas, stopped here along the banks of the crystal clear Como River and Guadalupe River and stayed. It is the hub of aqua adventure and general outdoorsiness. None other than uh, New Braunfels, Texas. Yeah. New Braunfels, Texas. Braunfels, Texas. Braunfels, Texas. Yeah. <clears throat> the home yeah. of the Guadalupe River and the Como River, boy. About is that a word? Outdoorsiness? Yeah, man, that's a Texas guess. word. Outdoor Chad, did you make that word up, Chad? Outdoorsiness? <laughs> that's, that's a real word. <laughs> <laughs> I think a, a, another interesting little fact about it was they're heading to Indianola. And uh, Indianola got wiped out by two different tornadoes. So all that's left there is a, a monument. Oh, wow. To indicate the spot. Yeah, so, uh, so they were lucky not to go head up <laughs> that far north. They picked the right spot. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, I awesome, guess if man. outdoorsiness is a word, I guess you can also say outdoorsiness less. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, that, huh? oh, my gosh. Here I we mean, go. you know, think about it. I, I don't think we're going to have to shoot those arrows, bro. I think we'll be able to figure it out here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> up, you're up, Chav. Okay, next up is the largest city on the Kitsap Peninsula and home to the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and the Bremerton Annex of the uh, Naval Base Kitsap. It is connected to downtown Seattle by two ferries. It was the historical territory of the Suquamish people. The land became available for non-native settlement by the Treaty of Point Elliot and then developed by German immigrant William Bremer. Uh, and we're talking about Bremerton, Washington. Bremerton, Washington. From the East Coast, Bremerton, Washington. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still waiting on, I'm still waiting on some people up there to tell me what's been going on up there. Yeah, Washington, man, the views are still uh, unbelievable, man. Pretty cool, no yep. doubt. Joe, next up, this city's located in the Lower Shenandoah Valley, and was established by an act of the Virginia General Assembly that was adopted in 1778 during the American Revolutionary War. Wow. Major battles were fought here during the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. It's the fastest growing city, city in the state. It is known as the gateway to the Shenandoah Valley in Martinsburg, West by God, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Country road, take me home. Yes, sir. West yeah, Virginia man. in the house from the and East the, Coast. The Shenandoah Valley is gorgeous, man. It is, man. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Go Mountaineers. Grew yep. up going in those areas over there, Shenandoah and 
Blue Ridge Parkways and all that up there, man. Gorgeous yes, area. So, y'all, our next stop, our next top listening city <laughs> is located <clears throat> along the north shore of Shuswap Lake in British Columbia, Canada. The name is an adaptation of that of William Celesta, the last of the Indian doctors of the ne- <laughs> of the, wait, I yeah, do well, Welcome to my world. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta yeah. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Nesconlith Reserve. That's how you say that too, man. Who died, he, this guy died in 1948 near the age of 100. And back then, that's like two lifetimes. Wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. One of the popular activities here, and this this is where we're going from the past to the present, is Zorbing. You guys ever heard of Zorbing? No. Mm, kind of. Okay. <laughs> zorbing is like a giant hamster ball for humans. Oh, wow. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, it, <clears throat> even though it's one of the stranger extreme sports out there, Zorbing is actually pretty simple. You climb inside a big inflated ball and you roll down a hill, man. And and it has also spawned other Zorbing games. There's Zorbing football. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, Zorbing soccer. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, way cool. And this is in one other, none other than Celestia Celeste, Celista. I know you get this right. It's Celista, British Columbia, Canada. Our northern brothers and sisters. Celista. That's cool, man. Uh, Joe, Canada, thank Joe. you for not letting me read that one. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> kind this time. Well, you and uh, look, look I, I got an idea. Yeah. If we are going to do something as a team building exercise, if we're ever going to do this sorbing as a soccer game, we'll yeah, make yeah. sure Manano's the ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think yeah. everybody's a ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there's got to be like the ball Please. that goes in the goal. Give me a break, like everybody man. kicks around. Yeah, yeah break, bro. So. <laughs> so, Manano, you up next, brother. This seat is located. Oh, wait, wait, Manano, Manano. I want you to understand something. What you are just getting ready to talk about is. It is not only basketball history, it's basketball legend and basketball religion here in New Mexico. I just wow. want to put that in the right perspective, okay? Well, I'll be, I'll be honored. I'll be honored. Yeah, here we go. Okay. This city located in the flatlands of southeastern New Mexico is known for its oil and gas industry and their boys' high school basketball team. The Eagles have won 17 state basketball championships, and their 1970 squad averaged a national record 117 points per game under coach Ralph Tasker. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ralph Tasker. All was discovered in 1927 at a depth of 4,000 feet in and its heyday. Three humble oil company wells produced 19,000, not nine, 500,000. So, sorry, let me, let me get this right. 9,500 yeah. barrels of oil a day. Oof. This is for Hobbs, New Mexico. Hobbs, yeah. Eagles, Hobbs. and Hobbs, New Mexico. <laughs> New Mexico. Been there many times. <clears throat> and that's me a too. heck of an oil field town. And, uh, that is, those are some prolific wells, 9,500 barrels a day. Woo, man. But, but Chav, tell them how prolific that basketball team was. No doubt. Yeah, that basketball team is pretty amazing. And uh, <clears throat> they uh, full court press the whole game, uh, man-to-man full court press. So they're pressure from the moment the game starts to wow. the very end. And on In that your oil, face the whole time. Yeah. yeah. And on that <laughs> oil well, you know, you guys know better, but uh, – they said that they weren't sure where to put the first oil wells when they got there because <laughs> topography is just flat, flat. There's no uh, no kind no of structure, uh, yeah. no structure of any kind that you could see where when you would think it. there would be oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. L- Luis, uh, some of y'all's really prolific wells in the Bakken, they're three, 4,000 well- barrels per day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, around those numbers. So, so I, I a mean, little higher in some cases, but that's usually just uh, – 
you know, kind of first production when, yeah. and, and they, they taper off because you have several wells next Draw to them. each other. And, yeah. but, uh, usually when you flow them back initially, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, 9,500 barrels a day. It's a ton of Ooh, production. Man, those are prolific wells for sure. Yeah. And <clears throat> a guy named Greg Procell, uh, Chav, <clears throat> he's the only player in high school basketball history in the state of Louisiana to score 100 points in a game by himself. Wow. And, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Procell was a heck of a basketball player. Ralph Pastor's so teams, uh, they, they were – they were team in every sense of the word, and uh, <laughs> it was so intimidating because you <clears throat> knew if you were a guard, buddy, and the moment you stepped on that floor, you were going to be harassed in a man-to-man -man full court pressure defense an entire game. Man, it was unbelievable. Wow. That's pretty, pretty cool, cool, man. Now, <clears throat> going back to the oil part there, Joe, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Beto, but I think that uh, the Humble Oil Company, um, I think that's the company that used to have some wells also in our Humble area Absolutely. here northeast of uh, Fuse. And that's the yeah. reason why that area is yeah. called Humble. Yeah, Humble Oil. Uh, it was right here yeah, in downtown Because of Humble, Humble Texas. Oil Company. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wow, yeah. a lot of history right there. Big yeah. time. All right, guys, let's rock it, man. Tonight, the Elk Bros Playbook Simplified. What it is, the main points, um, the things that we do that make us successful in the Elk Woods, guys. And, uh, um, well, this is good we, stuff. We want to talk around. about those things, man. We want to talk about those things that, uh, you know, are, are what we do. It's not that what we do is, is what everybody has to do. It's not... Uh, uh, the only way to do things is just the Elk Bros way. And, and what's what I don't know how much you're going to hear me tonight in this. I'm sure you will. It's just a habit I have. But I'm really <laughs> curious uh, to hear the viewpoints of each of our Elk Bros and some of these things and how you your perspectives on how you see what we do. And uh, and then I kind of want to throw things as we go. So, guys, man, uh, let's give these uh, guys the version, how we hunt, our beliefs, um, some of the expectations you guys have when we go out there and the things that we know what to be true. So fire away, man. Uh, if I may. Uh, Absolutely. I'll, please leave I, I think, man, I, I – when, when you told us the topic for today, the first two things that came to mind were um, relationship and uh, teamwork. And so, and those two kind of go hand in hand to me, Joe. I think um, we have an incredible relationship amongst our group. And uh, we somehow work to landed in positions to where we all have our strengths and weaknesses and cover for each other's strengths and weaknesses. That's awesome. Um, we all have, you know, things that we're great at and we all have things that we're learning and then, you know, that are covered by other team members that they're great at those things and they're learning <laughs> other things. And all, if you combine that with the, with the, the passion that we share, the friendship that we share, oh, the yeah. support system that we have up in the mountains. Um, I don't think there is any of us that go out there thinking that um, selflessly, selfish, selfish, selfishly, self yeah. uh, selfishly yeah. um, of, you know, being just the one person that wants to tag out. I mean, I think we're all in for everybody and we all concentrate on the person who doesn't, hasn't tagged out yet and, and you know, needs the help the most. I, I think it's just the nature of our relationship and that has created that team environment in which we support each other so much. So I, I personally think, and yes, and there are, within that, we have, we have built a method of hunting. Uh, we have built a set of beliefs as a team and we have clear expectations from the get-go but I think that to me is the core of what makes us us and makes us successful up in the mountains man I you know that's so cool that you you said that because I mean we are definitely all different personalities oh for Absolutely. sure you know 
and uh, it, it's pretty cool. I think that's one thing that that those people listening to us right now really like about this group is, man, we are just uh, so different in so many ways, but we all have a, a, a commonality. Now, that's yeah. awesome, Luis. And, and we're sold out to one another. You know, yeah. uh, I, I, I echo those sentiments as well, what Luis has said. Uh, it's kind of uncanny, man. I, I really... You know, and cliche-ish at the time, at, at the time of saying that it's kind of uncanny. But, you know, w these guys have only been hunting with me and you, Joe, for what, four years? Uh, five years. Five. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's really short period of time to build that kind of bond. And uh, these guys are, I wouldn't want to hunt with anybody else, I'm telling you. Uh, well, when you think about that bond that was created between yourself and, and, and me, for sure. I mean, yeah. yeah. It was, it was that, it was probably that four years of, of, you know, being together and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, no, I, I, and there were things that you did and things that I saw because uh, I think a lot of us are alike in a lot of ways that, well, you know, we don't do buttholes, man. We don't do, mm -hmm. uh, selfish people. We don't, we, we don't work well around people that don't, uh, they don't have your back. Yeah, that ain't down to for the for the group, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, there's not. I mean, every one of these guys, when we talk about guys that want to ride the river, they're in. No matter if they slept two hours or they get, they've had ten hours, and you know, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, look, I I killed that bull last year. I knew the cavalry was coming. My nano was dead on his feet, about ready to pass clean out, <laughs> and uh, had done all he could do. Uh, the whole it, and, and look you, when you're in the mountains it is a physical siege but more than anything it's a mental siege that wears you down right and yeah. these guys I knew the cavalry was coming uh, so we never quit uh, when they got there we were ready Manano and I butchered that up we were ready to get get him all packed up and go and these guys never complained a bit uh, same thing with the, the night I killed a bull two years ago or a year ago I mean it was it was brutal because these guys had already been working on elk for the last two days, you know. And we treat we treat every elk as if it's our own. Man. Absolutely, I mean yeah. it's just that's that's, that's the way I see true. it. You know, I enjoy it almost the same. I you know to me it's just kind of the same passion regardless of who killed it. Yeah, it's a total team yeah. effort. Yeah, total that's team really effort. That's really important. As far as how we hunt. Joe, uh, well, we... before, but I'm going to, before you hold on to that thought, okay, Gilbert, and sure. we're going to hit that because, you know, I, I want to do some proof in here because we've gotten to the point that, I mean, when we have to take care of an animal, being able to take care of that really helps the group to go back out again. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of, uh, the central caller in, in, in this organization. And mm -hmm. man, when I came, after I killed my bull, Luis and Manano were like, bro, We've got this. We will process your elk. You yeah. take the guys, man. You know, get them out there, and, and uh, we've got your back. We're going to take care of it. I mean, and they had deer licenses, man. Yeah. Uh, they could have been out there hunting on their own. They could have been thinking about that. And I wouldn't have blamed them for doing that. I'd have stayed in and done that and said, I'll get out with the guys as soon as I get it done, you know, if they wanted to go do their thing. I couldn't blame them for that. But, but you know, and I wouldn't expect them to do what they did, but that's just the kind of people they are, they are. you know. Yep. And, uh, I mean, it was um, was beyond cool. You, you would have done the same, Joe. The thing is, I don't know how to call it properly. <laughs> <laughs> we need to change that, man. We need to change that. We're working no, on, we're I, working I, on I, it. We're I'm working, working on it. Yeah. I'm right. working on we're it. Working I on know it. how to cow call, at least. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't about know how to view. You were going to say, but... Gilbert. No, I just, you know, as far as how we hunt, man, it's a, it's kind of a complex scenario. But look, I, I want you all to understand how we hunt is aggressive. Okay. Uh, if I can explain it in one word, man, we are going to put boots on the ground and we are going to cover properly, uh, in, you know, using the wind and everything that we talk about on these podcasts, but we are extremely aggressive in our approaches to elk. Hunting. And I think, I think that word aggressive Beto is, is leaning more towards persistent. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. man, are we stubborn? Yeah, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. You know? Look, I'm. It, Joe says this a hundred times, and and we all look at one another and go, 
was that an elk? <laughs> because if Joe hears one, man, <laughs> if Joe hears one, we're going, you know. And yeah. it's also, it's also the mantra we have too, man. You know, I'm driven by coaches like that. That uh, I'm driven as a person anyway. But when coaches, hey, we got a job to go do. I'm in. Let's go. You know. Uh, and now I might have to take a break halfway through it because I'm about ready to die. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm down because I'm telling you, man. If you can get me within 80 yards of that animal, he's in serious trouble, right? So I feel like how we hunt is extremely aggressive. We're going to create our our opportunities by using what God gave us, our feet, our calling abilities, and we trust one another. When I'm with Joe, man, it's like I don't have care in the world, man, because that guy's going to get the elk to me now it's about me finishing you know uh and i felt that way too calling bulls in for brendan i mean you know we were very successful calling bulls and we just gotta finish you know uh again how we hunt I, and i adopted that that uh that style you might ask chav because he's been with me a lot uh, i've adopted that aggressive style and, and and when i'm with chav as much too we hunt for to see elk if if we can see them i there's no doubt in my mind that i can make a play and get in there and get it done right um it's kind of like the the venezuelan boys man that you better not let them see you because they're gonna come get you you know uh, especially with the i think like i said with our aggressive nature our our ability to make the right calls at the right time understanding how to speak the language and how to change up on the fly, like Luis's bull this year, go from aggressive mentality calling to herd mentality to change the perspective of the bull or the prey that we're hunting. I think we do that better than most. We're, a, 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 we're, a, 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 we're always looking for ways to affect the... Uh, the attitude of the animal that we're observing, right? We're always looking to see how that's affected. And I, I think the ability to change on the fly, to make really good decisions. And then look, I, I'm not going to discount the 40 years of experience that our two coaches have in the area. I mean, look, we're, we're kind of spoiled with that. These cats know every nook and cranny that these these elk can get to or get in so you know we're kind of cheating a little bit with that yeah. <laughs> we're not having to do a whole bunch of scouting and in in things of that nature e-scouting i mean these guys know the area like the back of their hand so but you bring up a good point though i mean in our playbook the more you know an area oh yeah the 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 more advantage you have and that's why we had a question last week when uh one of our, our listeners talked about going from one area to another. It, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, I was like, well, if I have elk in the area and I'm having encounters, I don't know if I want to give up that home court advantage, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. so that's one thing that. For sure. No, I, and, and look, we jumped. We jumped on on a flatter part of the learning curve. You know, mm -hmm. you guys learned the hard way joe i mean you guys me, took I, many many years to, I, to get I, up to that point I, I was i was about to to address something like that luis uh, uh i was brought by luis to this beautiful group uh and i uh, of course I, I was a uh, rifle hunter before and i knew how to decently uh harvest an animal but it would have taken me i don't know how many years to be where I am right now in elk hunting, if it would have been without Joe or or Chaff or or Beto, I mean, I feel I'm feeling. Or Luis, yeah, go ahead. No, no <laughs> way. <laughs> but but I, I, I feel to to, to to put in that perspective, I feel I I pass through the university of the elk hunting. Yeah. Because the way that Joe and, and, and Chav and Beto uh, taught me 
and taught us how to elk hunt was, I mean, was really, really easy. It was a, it was a, 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 a coaching cool, style. Yeah. I mean, it was a, a really effective uh, way to, to, to learn and, and to quickly learn how to hunt and to, and to, to understand the language. Yeah. And, and it, so it was really, really easy. animal behaviors. So yeah. let me ask you this, Manano. How, how much did, you know, when you were first coming in, sure, you had Luis that was giving stuff to you. So you had kind of a, a perspective or an expectation going into Ma the first time you came with us. And how did those expectations, how have those expectations changed from originally to currently now? Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this really quick. I fell in love with you, yo. After... <laughs> <laughs> you got a man crush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no. Or my, daddy my, issues. My 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 expectations. Uh, I I I I said, Luis, uh, would you ask him? Ask them if I can go there just to make a you know good food and and help the camp and be there. I, I went the first time I, I, I didn't yeah. have any, any talk. Yes. Yeah, just and, as a cook. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and after the, the, um, L camp, I said, Hey, this is, uh, I don't know the my, one of my best, if not my best, uh, hunting experience in my whole life. Yeah. And, uh, and I was just, you know, they're uh, helping Luis and helping you guys, and it was amazing. He means it, and he's had he's had a ton of hunting experiences. <laughs> oh, no doubt. So yeah. for him to say yeah. that, you know, it's, yeah, I um, mean, it was it was beautiful. The the, the, the right word yeah. was beautiful. It was yeah. a, an amazing and a beautiful experience. And and my my expect my my, my expectation. Uh, I mean, I, I I wasn't expecting to be treated like the way the way that was yeah you, you you guys treat me as another hunter yeah i was a helper there uh but only to I your mean, face man that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah look, I, look but, I, I can speak for the whole group when you showed up and and then when we were done we're like that guy's coming back there's no doubt about it and we're gonna get a tag and we're gonna get this guy around i mean look Manano is just one of the most endearing people you'll ever meet in your life. One of the hardest working guys. And, uh, you know, it just, it's a testament to the type of people Luis tries to, to be around all the time. You know, Luis doesn't, Luis a lot like Joe, he don't do with buttholes. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this guy, uh, and him are exquisite friends. Uh, but it, it just lends to the beliefs that we have that we're going to be with like-minded people and do like-minded things uh, and share camp with people that we love and have the passion that we have to hunt elk, you know? Um, and I, and I truly believe this guys. And I know Chad will tell you this. There is not a day we don't go out in the elk woods and I'm speaking for the mafia and everybody else. There's not a day we don't go out in the elk woods that we don't believe we can kill an elk. Oh right? yeah. And yeah. I mean, yeah. Every the time we is there, yeah. yeah. And look, and that's something that, I learned from Joe, right? I mean, that wasn't that wasn't my mindset when I started hunting because I understood, you know, the probabilities and and how difficult it could potentially be um, to harvest an elk in public land with a bow. I mean, so it, it wasn't until I started hunting with you guys and 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 listening to Joe saying that. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just, the mindset is so important. And look, you know, I, you mentioned something earlier today, um, Beto, when you were saying, hey, um, you know, hey, we have a support system, we help each other out. We, you know, Manano, uh, you knew that the Calvary was going to come out and Manano was going to be out there, uh, even though he was like dead. He was. He's dead, dead tired. tired because he had helped me carry my elk out of the woods that morning and yeah. clean it while I had to go to town. I mean, it just, it was an incredible day, right? And Grinders tuning in. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Elk Hunting Podcast. Our goal is to share our knowledge and help you flatten that learning curve so that you too can have some of the 
very same incredible experiences that have given all of us here at Elk Bros a lifetime of memories. If you like what you hear or see, you can get all of this information plus so much more from our Base Camp Elk Hunting Training Camp, the first in a series of online courses from our Blue Collar Elk Academy. Our Base Camp Training Camp allows me to use my coaching style and share almost 40 years of elk hunting experiences successfully hunting elk on public lands as well as over 20 years guiding hunters of all ages and experience levels. This course will be like nothing you have ever experienced in concept and structure using success-based coaching techniques that will elevate your confidence and skill sets. Our camp will prepare you specifically from that final moment most in your control, those final minutes or seconds the elk is in front of you, backwards through each step and level, allowing you to see, visualize, understand, and relate every coaching point to what lies ahead, the next step, the next thought process, the next success. Because y'all, you've already been there. You know what it looks like. By tapping my 30 years of teaching and coaching experience, our camps are developed considering multiple learning modes with text, visuals, audio, as well as video. And Base Camp will benefit those new to elk hunting all the way to the 10 to 15 year vet. So if you are looking for that one thing to help you fill that tag this year, invest in the most important piece of equipment there is, you and your elk hunting knowledge. You can find the Blue Collar Elk Hunting Academy and the Base Camp Training Camp at elkbros.com. That's E-L-K-B-R-O-S dot com. Keep dreaming of the screaming, believing and achieving, and most of all, keep grinding. But the point is like, so look, it's hard. And hunting elk, it's extremely tough and challenging the way we do it. Okay. And yes, you hear us saying all these positive things and yeah, we keep this positive mindset. Look, man, we're humans. Yeah. And there's days out there that we're freaking mad and <laughs> upset and yeah. tired yeah. and we don't want to hear anybody talk and we're, we're like, just had enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. But because this is, that's, you know, we are comfortable in feeling that way around one another, our friends yeah. while hunting because we also know that they understand us and they will support us and they'll just kind of do you know pick us up and help us out and in a way just kind of support us joe the day that um, manano killed his bull and you know we had a blizzard coming in and you know we had to get that bull all the way down from that mountain into the four-wheeler and then it was just driving all the way back it was like we were i was exhausted and when i get back to camp i realized i freaking drop my phone in the middle in the middle of the snow and it started snowing like crazy yeah, we're at really? camp we're probably an hour away from this place and i'm like man i i just i popped a gasket at that point i was so upset man but guess what joe joe could tell and yeah. joe was just kind of there with me and he was kind of keeping his cool man and he is like staying positive and just kind of helped me calm down. And guess what, man? Joe found my phone, man. So, I mean, it was just like <laughs> we were all happy and everything back was back to normal. But incredible. Yeah. I mean, I had never thought we were going to find that phone oh, and, out and, and actually, what we did was was a little on the stupid side because we, we went out there um, in an incredible blizzard. I mean, yeah. freezing cold, hard to see where you were going. You could, yeah. you know. Snowing. And, and we didn't have a communication device. Right. Um, we had left that, you know, we kind of went out on our own. If things would have gone bad, yeah. it could have. And your phone was dying. The battery was dying on your phone. Right. So, yeah. I mean, so... I get, it, the point is that, look, man, it's hard. Um, it, it's physically extenuating. It's mentally challenging. Uh, but but when, I, I wouldn't do it and, with anybody this else. Is, this is, thank you, bro. And, and this is for everything that goes with, it, this is the general attitude of the hunt was yeah. there was a point looking for that phone just like when we're looking for elk <laughs> just yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. that you know that Luis was like that's it man I'm not going to find it yep. and it, it was just like let's go look one more time yeah. it was yep. the, one more ridge it was that <laughs> one more you know 100 more yards yep. it was just that last hour of the day that, that last this minute ridge. of the last hour yeah. let's just give it 
one, one more, more try, shot. right? That's right. And we go back after hooking all this time, gave it one more try, and guess what? It saw an edge, and I don't know how we passed it, saw an edge in the snow and found it just like, you know, when we were out there this year and we hadn't heard anything all day long, and it's just like, let's just go check on top of this next ridge, man. Yeah. Just Let's just go over before and you use a little bit of light and things happen, man. Everything blew it, up. I, yeah. I, that goes to the the mind how we hunt it goes to the mindset joe we have that mindset that we're not going to give up man yeah. it's mm -hmm. the mindset that we're going to go till we can't we're going to exhaust every opportunity that's out there uh we're not going to leave anything left to chance we're going to go that extra mile even when we're tired even when we're weary i mean i, I lost my phone that hunt too uh, it fell, it off, fell off <laughs> my mule. Go going, yeah, we, and we ran, ran it over with the four wheelers. Yeah, yeah, we I don't ran know about these friggin' cell phones, I'm, I'm man. They're starting to drive I mean, me friggin' batty, man. On and everything, but, uh, <laughs> it's still with me today. I mean, we went back, tracked it, and found it. And uh, after we drove over it, yeah, after we drove <laughs> over it. Yeah. So uh, look, I mean, nothing, no hunts without <laughs> without peril it's challenges without yeah. challenges i mean look the year before that it was like mad city i don't know how we pulled off what we did then but it's because of the brotherhood that we do have uh you know and our expectations of one another is high as well you know joe expects everybody that comes into camp to be ready for the unexpected. I mean, if we got to go and do things that are unorthodox, we're going to be ready for that. None of the guys all, they all say, oh, no, we ain't doing that. No, that's not how it is. You know, Joe and Chav are the leaders of the group. And when they say, you know, jump, we say how high. So um, it's part of that pecking order that we understand, too, um, that no doubt we're all spreading our wings and getting better and, you know, junior guiding and stuff like that, calling bulls in and whatnot. And Joe feels comfortable with us doing those kinds of things. But it's the expectations of one another to know that, hey, when we come in, we're going to be prepared. One of the cool things about Luis is he is very prepared uh he's his lists are all his eyes are dotted and t's are crossed we're not going to forget things our expectations of one another are to be spot on we're ready to go our bows are ready our equipment's ready uh you know we're, we are we do fight a few little things that jump up and bite us every now and then but we we grow from that too you know i mean you look at four years ago when we're knocking out down you know in our success of finding them and stuff it was different now, when we knock them down, brother, we walk up and look at them. You know, it's uh, it's all evolved. You know, I'm really, I'm really, really wanting to hear from our sensei in the group and Chad mm -hmm. on how he believes we hunt and beliefs and expectations, brother. Well, obviously, uh, everybody has a passion, you know, for elk hunting, but going back to expectations, um, you know, a lot of the success that we have comes from the off season yeah. you know everybody comes in real good shape you know uh you know gilbert you've lost a lot of weight round is a shape you're <laughs> not hurt and you know the reason yeah. uh is out there running all the time showing us his two mile times uh so you know you're working to get your body in shape because you know it's going to be an adventure it's going to be a grind out and then of course you, you guys are you know you're the uh louise manuel uh gilbert and joe you know for the best uh archers you know i've ever seen you know like gilbert mentioned before uh, you know you expect opportunities in our case in your case i think if you spot an elk first there's a 90 percent plus chance it's going to go down uh because of the preparation and the fact that these guys are really good closers but uh yeah practice makes perfect and uh, like gilbert said expect the unexpected because you never know what's going to happen whether it's uh, the four wheeler breaking down and you have, you have, you're having to walk it a little bit longer than you go. Uh, or walk and, all the way back to camp, Joe. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, hill. Like Gilbert mentioned also is, you know, uh, you know Joe's a, a real good coach. And when he says we're getting up at four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> there's a reason for it. You know, that's when you can hear the elk. Or if you stay out later after dark, you know, you're not just walking back to camp, you're trying to locate for the next day. So 
there's always something going on. And what I like about that group too, it's always evolving as far as uh, every time we're out there, everybody's gaining knowledge and everybody's attempting to learn how to bugle and cow call and all that, which will make the group even better, you know? So, uh, you know, it's, it's an awesome group to be a part of. It really is. And that's, um, well, that's and you've been our big inspiration too, Chav, watching you go, Tar. what you've gone through, uh, it, you know, how can we not be prepared after watching what you've done? And, and look, you've been my coach for, you know, four or five years now. So uh, not having my coach at my side this year was tough, you know, uh, but we all were, you know, pushing and that mean the first person I wanted to text when I, when I knocked that bull down was you. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was great hearing, hearing the results. It was pretty yeah, awesome. Well, we 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 couldn't do what we did this year without having that inspiration. I promise you. I I think I can speak for all the guys for sure. It puts a lot I, of things in perspective, and you know that that's the other thing is is the friggin' pride thing. Look, all of us are competitive. All of us have pride. <laughs> yeah. But the and and for you guys that are listening, don't expect your group to be like this. What I want you guys to understand is it's just not an overnight thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have various personalities. We're all so different, but we allow learning moments. And, you know, when things like Chav said, when I'm, when I'm getting up at 3.30 and I'm guiding guys and they're not getting up and I'm having to get them up, it's kind of like where I go, hey, you know, this is your hunt. You yeah. want this, you got to show it, you know, and, and I might have to say that, but I'm only going to say it so much. And it's, that's a learning moment. Either they bite, buy in, or they don't. And, you know, I mean, we give each other crap all the time about stuff. And some of that is actual. My, my nano doesn't bite. Uh, He's uh, not. I, I bite. <laughs> He snores all the time. He snores. <laughs> After you tell him that, he just stays there snoring. 13 seconds. <laughs> that, that's true, too. But I, I'll tell you that, you know, we we let each other know when there's something that we need to work on, each of us. Yeah. And we can either get all – a person can either get pissed about that or they can understand that, hey, this is because they want me to be better. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's that same coaching thing. A yeah. coach does not come to you and tell you you're slacking or you need to get better at this or you're taking a shortcut here or you're doing really great there but not here. They don't tell you that because they want to pull you down. It's because they want you to be better. And within your group, that should be able to happen. That You should allow that to happen. And you should be able to communicate without getting pissed off about it. And there's going to be times that you're tired. And like mm -hmm. Luis says, there's times when it's like, oh, my God, I got to get up at 3.30 again. But, it, 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 hey, that. you know, <laughs> it, how bad do you want it? And that's what I tell them. Look, it's your hunt, man. I mean, it's mm -hmm. been 350 days of wanting this, mm -hmm. and you don't want to get up because of some sleep, you know, that's just, uh, and we do that. And he hears that message. He hears that message when I talk about calling. But at the same time, I put my money where my mouth is because, look, we want to kill elk. That's our goal. Our goal is to punch a tack. So it's to be the best we can at the time in the situations that we are. But at the same time, we want to build for the future. We want to be stronger as a group. So I get in a situation that there's an animal out there. I'm like, Luis call bud and Luis is like what you know <laughs> i'm calling you know or me we have to go because chad's not feeling well and it's like Luis, you're the guide man you do the yeah. calling for everybody it's like i don't know if i can do that yes you can yeah, because we believe each other in each other and we put mm -hmm. each other in situations for growth mm -hmm. you know so oh, who cares if you blow something out exactly. i do it all the time and i'm like they're they're not going to question me because like oh joe knows what he's doing well joe's going to screw up man and i'm going to blow things out but it's not for trying and you get to learn from everything and yeah. understand that yourselves as a group yourselves as an elk hunter yourself as an archer yourself as a father as a human being uh as a husband everything is about a journey and it's about growth and allow yourself to make mistakes but learn and improve that's all that's i my goal is i don't want to be calling for everybody all the time i want this guy i want that guy i want that guy i want all of them calling 
in for me. And I tell you what, the day it happens, man, will be one of the proudest days in my life, man. Yeah. It really will. That's cool. Well, I've gotten to witness it. So I've gotten to be on calling a few bulls with Joe yep. and, and having, you know, Joe actually shoot a tree and a bull at the same time. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've witnessed that. It is so cool. I've called in some bulls for Chav. I've called in some bulls for Brendan. And I'm telling you, you know, five years ago, I couldn't do that. Six years ago, I couldn't do that. I, I started evolving and getting better and getting better and watching, watching Luis grow into a, a really good uh, elk caller has been awesome. I give him a lot of crap, but he has gotten <laughs> very good. And, uh, you know, Brendan's working on his calling too. And, and it, you know, he's, I guarantee you, Manano will work on it. I, I've even heard Chad with a diaphragm in his mouth here lately. So, I mean, look, it, it's uh, it's something that we're real passionate about. I love calling elk. I love seeing their reactions. Uh, it's one of my passions that I like to do. But, you know, when we talk about what we know to be true. What we know to be true is our equipment, okay? It's standing the test of time, right? Joe talks about what we use and our equipment, what we know to be true is our equipment last has taken a beating over the last five years. I've been shooting the same bow for the last six or seven years and I've killed seven elk with it, uh, every year. So, um, I don't change a whole lot. You know, what we, Kind of down here, we're kind of simple here in Texas. If it ain't fix, if it ain't broke, we don't fix it. So um, we've tried a lot of things and uh, used a lot of equipment. So one of the things that you know on our previous podcast, you go back and talk. We've talked about the the gear that we use, man. You know the setup that Joe uses with his wasp broadheads and carbon arrows and that big bow that he shoots with the heavy poundage. He blows through animals, right, uh, Luis. He, I mean, this guy weighs every arrow, so he is very well prepared with his equipment. Uh, you know, Chav is always organized with his equipment and stuff like that when we're out in the woods. I mean, he and and, and also Chav's learned how to use electronics with Onyx and everything else. I mean, what we know to be true is the things that we use in the field and that that help us every day, day in and day out. Onyx, base maps, uh, our awesome outdoor edge knives, right? I mean, everything that we could talk about that has helped us be successful and make our jobs easier, you know, all the way down to the socks we wear, you know, I mean, what we know yeah. to be true is the gear. Flexible that grunt tube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the reliability of all that, right? But I also think, Beto, that um, at least to me, uh, one of the things that I know to be true is um, the knowledge of elk and elk behavior. Um, I, I think in my journey, it has shown me that understanding and knowing elk better has made me, has given me more opportunities yep. and uh, better opportunities. And um, so, yeah, everything Even you're recognizing saying. Recognizing an opportunity from not one. Right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and so to me, knowledge uh goes hand by hand with 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 the equipment like you mentioned and also uh, back to real quick back to expectations you know it, i would like people to understand we hunt seven days and we have five to six tags to fill in our hunt killing five to six elks in seven days guys <laughs> it's it's yeah it's a feat it, it's i mean uh, i just i i look back at the hunts i've had with you guys and seen the number of elks that we've harvested in the short amount of time because people need to understand i mean we kill something midday look that person is going to be tied in for the rest of the day just cleaning and and processing, processing. and maybe you know uh, uh getting that elk out of the woods man right. it's just i mean and then you know, the other guy's got to keep hunting. And then it's just like, just the logistics behind five to six people trying to harvest five to six elks in seven days is out of this world. Yeah. It's, I mean, so that's our expectation. We go out to the woods yeah. expecting to harvest an elk per person and 
fighting hard for it all seven days we're out there. We've done two in a day. I mean, yes. we killed we killed uh, uh, three elk in four days, man. I yeah. mean, uh, and I think we ended up with four elk in, in four days. Yes. I think five, something dude. like that, or four elk in five days. And Yeah, uh, and, it, and look, that's the cool thing about this group. When Joe knocked his bull down, every single guy went and got on that bull, and we got him done quickly, so – Everybody was ready to hunt that evening. You know, yeah, we yeah. could go back and, and knock it out. And, and, and the mafia boys were there back at camp. You know, uh, it's, it's exactly right, Joe. You killed your bull in, in the morning. I killed my bull that evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you know? right. So, I mean, yep. that was crazy. We, we've done that two years in a row because yeah. uh, we've had an elk taken in the morning. And, and then that's, that that's, that's, when, that's when I killed my elk in the morning. And then you killed yours in the afternoon bed. That's yeah. right. That's and right, and Manano killed his the evening before, so that yeah. was three elk in two days. Two days. Manano, yeah. I'm I'm curious to hear from you. What one thing do you think that really separates uh, what you've learned over the last five years than when you started? Uh, well, to to analyze myself, what I'm doing while hunting uh, after after I learned that I have to be in front of a tree and I have learned <laughs> <laughs> and I have I learned that's what I don't we know, know to be true. <laughs> 30 years in my, in my country with my father, get yeah. behind the tree. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Had to break some old habits. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, in, in, I, I always while hunting, I always question myself if I'm doing, and I, if I feel comfortable uh, doing what, you, what what I'm doing right now. I mean, it's are you shooting in a in a in a, uh, a good animal? Are you able to make an ethical shot? Are you able to to be? Are you prepared to take this animal? And and one of the one of the main. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a skill or 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 good point of of, of view of of of, a, of a Joe is every time after I kill something or a, or after I attempt to kill something he he would he he would come in and say hey okay great job but you have to do this this and this it's a quick feedback. But those heavy words, I always keep in my mind. You know, like it's it's uh, it's like a like 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 I'm recording right now his voice. Mm -hmm. Hey, you have to do this, this, and this before the animal comes, and it's a I don't know. It it, it was for me a game changer. Like like I said in the beginning, uh, this is the university. It, it, it was it was like a, a jump from 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 scratch as a hunter as an elk hunter yeah. so you know, everything changed yeah you know the, it only changes like that though when it's received the way you receive it man absolutely Ga man. guys that saying. guys that walk well, into a camp yeah guys that walk into a camp that are closed minded and know everything already and are you know uh, holier than thou kind of hunters they'll never be able to learn stuff like that because well, every, they're not open they're not open and humble they're not humble in their spirit like yeah, yeah but, but the thing is uh but the thing is uh gotta be coachable yes yes absolutely i think that's and what it, we do better than you can learn from everybody yeah. you know we're learn something different yeah but but you have to be aware if you are a good hunter, I mean, if if you if you wanted to be a good hunter, you have to be aware that every single hunt is different. If you are mm -hmm. hunting whitetail here in Texas, I mean, to put in a, a spot about a, a stock on a whitetail mm -hmm. deer here, it's like <laughs> cornflakes. <laughs> yeah, it's like walking over cornflakes. Exactly. Yeah, it's. I mean, good it's luck with that. Possible. Yeah, so, and, and if so you are hunting up there. You have to listen. The, the I, I'll tell you, there's to come into my camp, to stay in my camp. There's, it's real simple. You know, I look for somebody that is a hard worker, 
self-motivated. Um, I don't mind people making mistakes. I just don't want them making excuses for those mistakes. I, I want them to be willing to learn, to be coachable. If you're not coachable and you want to act like a know-it-all and you want it to become a pride thing and you want to be a butt about it, I don't want you around me. There's, uh, you, You're not going to improve and you're not going to improve our group. Uh, so, I mean, it's real. It's real simple with that. I mean, mm. if if a person is a hard worker, if they're so motivated and they are passionate about hunting, then I, I've got the formula for a great hunter. And there is not a single person that these people are listening to tonight that that does not describe, mm-hmm. because it's that passion that I saw in Luis the very time, first time I met him, and it had nothing to do with an elk in front of me. It yeah. had to do with the experience. Yeah. And, you know, that same passion that I saw in Manano and, and his humanism. And, and I can't, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, uh, Gilbert, you know, for you, bro, um, uh, you stole my heart when I realized how much you walked the talk and, uh, and, when it came down to us us being there uh to sh- to show how important Carl was in our life and and Budro you were there uh uh right now and it wasn't it none of it was fake it was a genuine love and your passion for hunting is second to none and and I've said hard things to you in your life and you could have just puffed up and sure. you could have just been you know hey what the heck I've killed a freaking thousand whitetail what's that western jerk telling me for right yeah. but no man I mean we became tight and I and I'll tell you what <laughs> best um, friends yep Chav has been my brother my mentor um, he's been my student, he's been my best friend, and Chab is, you know, I'm always out there, I'm loud, I'm proud, um, look, you, you better be careful, because Quiet, if you're not going to step forward to do something, I'm jumping in, man, yeah. so, and, and, and Chab is just so, um, he is the, the nicest, most humble, um, uh, person, genuine genuine genuinely kind and considerate and in, in a true teacher and friend uh you won't find any better i mean his example and and you you know gilbert you knew chav way before you knew chav Did, just yeah. from from, from elk, elk camp that's right yeah. yeah and so you guys out there surround yourself with quality people learn from them um, take them for who they are because they're, you know, they're not all going to be the full package, man. None of us are, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But you can each take those strengths and you can, you can look, uh, if we were to have a political and religious conversation right now, you'd all find we're all over the friggin' board, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but, you know, screw that. We love each other for who we are and, yeah. and here in the heart and in our passion. So, you know, all that stuff is second to uh, who we are as friends. And, 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 and like I said, that has been a journey. You guys are hearing about our journey as well as what we do, you know, and how we do it. You're getting a playbook right now. You know, you're understanding that it's about uh, our equipment, having trust in our equipment. You're hearing that it's teamwork. You're hearing that it's unselfishness. You're hearing that it's about area knowledge. You're hearing because it's about a successful mindset. You're hearing because it's about persistence, about allowing learning movement, about being deadly with your equipment. You know, I mean, deadly. I know when these guys pull back, man, something's going to die, man. Yeah, and, absolutely. You, you know, and you do what you can, but you allowed your group to build and have learning move, uh, moments. And you allow yourself, allow yourself to make mistakes and be ready to change whatever's going on. If it's not working at the drop of the hat, man, sometimes you just got to change up you got to be smart use your head and not be stubborn not to be locked in you know hunt the rut don't be in a rut (laughs) that's the one thing i tell people all the time man Mm -hmm. like that so uh there's there's some of those things that we have there and you know here's what i know to be true and i'm telling you guys this. this is what i know to be true how i feel and how i want you to feel that when i take this hand and I wrap my hand around that bow, 
and I step out into those woods and I smell the scent and I pay attention to that breeze and I pay attention to that thermal and I start walking in those woods, I truly believe that I'm going to take an elk that day. I know I can. And that's where I'm at. And my goal is what, that is what I go out there to do. Now, in that process, am I going to get to know these human beings around me? Am I going to share those experiences? Yeah, am I going to love the process of the hunt? Absolutely. That's what drives yeah. me yeah. inside here every yeah. year, right? We do take a lot of time to stop and smell the roses and enjoy yep enjoy things i mean you know there's a lot of times when, there's some downtime when you get in a little rest or you know after a 10 mile hike and you're about ready to pass clean out and you need a little bit of granola i mean we we just start talking and it's how we grow our bond too and look man every every one of these guys have been there at that at that point of where you're just like oh man i don't know if i can go another inch you know but it's it's the the goal of the group to help one another through those times and we can count on one another to be there if we need one another. We just absolutely know that these guys are never going to give up on what we do and how we treat one another. I mean, they're just not going to give up on each other. Uh, no matter what, whether we're tired, we're weary, it just doesn't matter. These guys are an exquisite group. Uh, and I challenge you guys to, to have yourself – uh, surrounded by people like that. And if you're not hunting in a group like that and they don't, you, you, they don't have share those same values, man, I, I challenge you to do that because it will take your hunting experience to a next level uh, and, and, and grow your bond with you guys that you hunt with. And that doesn't mean that you're, that you're not able to hunt solo. That's I right. mean, you know, like I, I've told people before, you can, you can have a group together and you can go out and hunt solo, but you still have people to share it with at camp and people to help you out when you get in a bind. And that's huge, man. You know, Luis, I think, can speak to this, too, because last year he did some of that. Yeah, and he did. I, I, I want to tell you, he I'm sure he enjoyed it, but I guarantee you he enjoys being with the group, no matter what, in what capacity. Whether, you know, yeah, we got deer tags and stuff like that, but... Eh, I'd much rather be videotaping Brendan or videotaping Manano or being in the middle of that elk uh, uh, scenario. And I think I'm speaking for Luis, but uh, go ahead and tell us how no, you No, you're absolutely right. Look, I mean, it just so happened that last year, that was the best way that we could split and to yeah. um, ensure the success for the rest of the group, right? And, you know, I felt like I was helping anyway. I mean, I, I was you know, kind of killing two birds with the same stone by scouting for you guys and at the same time trying to now fill the, the, the deer tag, potentially the bear tag. But um, this year when we all went out together, that was good. meant a lot to me. You know, it's like I had a blast, you know, mm -hmm. just all of us in there. I mean, there's just the laughs and the, and the conversations and the memories that we got for that one day that we all went out together uh pictures of beto's camo you know hiding behind the tree and and the stories <laughs> and the stories and the and the, and the, <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> and then you know just just the ability to like we had a plan and and just we we got into a herd of elk and we, we, we split and the plan fulfilled just as we had discussed. And I was able to kind of be right behind Joe, watch him on his hunt and be able yeah. to kind of witness the whole thing. I mean, it was unbelievable. So yeah, I mean, there are times in which you kind of have to go solo, like you guys said, and, and look, yeah, yeah, you enjoy it. You, you enjoy nature and, and you, you figure out a, w a way to help the team by doing that. But, and I just, there's something about spending the time together out on, out on the way. And, but, and I want people to understand too, is that sometimes hard decisions have to be made. I knew what it meant to Luis that year, but it wasn't functionally correct at that right. time. Yeah. And he was actually helping us more by not being with us, even though I knew it was tough. Even this year, 
We didn't do it to appease how he felt. Uh, we did it because it was functional and, and it accomplished yeah. something. By having two different photographers within that group was something that we needed to do for Elk Bros. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. that's a big focus for us now where it wasn't before. It was just all about the hunting, you know. Mm -hmm. Now it's not only about the hunting. It's about sharing the hunting mm -hmm. with all y'all out there that are listening. You know, we, we're yeah. trying to do that part. And and we do have some fun. And, and it <laughs> can be blast. seen. It, it it can be seen <laughs> for the first time. This is uh this is a picture of Gilbert uh showing how effective that, the Vaku camo, camo is. is. And I, out, look man. at how well he blends into that tree, y'all. Where it's is so he though? Cool. I can't I can't where, see where, him where though. That Vaku <laughs> camo <laughs> can hide me from the smallest <laughs> tree. Right <laughs> 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 that was heaven. awesome, man. Oh, we He's, have a lot of fun, man. We have a lot of fun. I mean. Joe's right. We have a lot of fun, but we're serious when we talk about, you know, knocking something down and, and, and doing what we need to do. I was never more disappointed in myself than when, when Joe called that bull in and we actually kind of boogered an opportunity. And then I, you know, with my calling ability, I stopped the bull and turned him broadside at 34 yards and I'm going to tell you right now, as God is my witness, when I draw that bow back at 34 yards, that bull is in serious trouble, right? And when I drew that bow back, all I seen was a black blob in my right eye. And I'm like, what in the world is that? I mean, what? We call it, we like, call it the pirate bow. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? And, and by, by the time I figured it out, as my, my peep had rotated, I reached up with my nose to move the peep over. And when I centered it back, he'd already turned turn and went away from me and I stopped him again, but it just wasn't a really good deal. But it was that, t that time that, you know, I had that one opportunity, man. And sometimes yeah. in an elk hunt, that's the only that's one. You, yeah. You, you get one out. opportunity. Yeah. So I was so upset with myself that I let my coach down. Not necessarily that I missed the opportunity because I knew if I got another one, we we're going to make that right. And what Joe said was, hey, look, I know one thing about you is you can be back in camp and that that ain't going to bother you again. Right. So he's Fair right. I go back to I go back to camp and, you know, Brendan and several other guys, they're asleep. They, they went and took a nap. Mm -mm, not Beto. I'm figuring out, can I make a 35 or 40 yard shot not looking out of that peep? And what's it going to look like if I don't look out of the peep? Right. Mm -hmm. So we got that behind us. The next time Joe did his thing, when I drew it back at 50 plus yards, it, the arrow found its mark and case of rah, I mean, we No, were and, and you know, as much as Gilbert was beating himself up, again, man, you got to be willing to have those learning mo moments. And when <laughs> yeah. he t turned and he told me, dude, I let you down, I was like, oh, screw that, man. Shut up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and and those, yeah, learning moments, in me, you know? those learning moments, those learning moments too yeah. become learning moments for all of us, right? I mean, Absolutely. having those conversations with Campbell, what that happened, I remember out of that troubleshooting issue you had that day, came the comment from Joe is like, well, have you ever tried to kind of place the pins to the right hand side of that black peep in case that happens, you mm -hmm. know, you know, how many inches to the left uh, or to the right you need to shoot mm -hmm. uh, if you have that happen. And I, that just kind of, you know, stroke a, a note on me. I was like, Oh crap. Yeah. That's actually a great idea. So, I mean, again, the more, those learning moments take place the more we accept them and the more we share them within our team we all grow together yeah and there's you know when we talk about what we know to be true when we're talking about our playbook um there's there's a a, a couple of things that i want to make sure that you guys listening understand that's part of our playbook and you heard about gilbert and his opportunity well I will tell you this, if you are going to be consistently successful at Elk Honey, you have to be able to create your own opportunities. Because if you're just waiting for them, I mean, it's going to be one opportunity in those seven days for all five of us, possibly. Yeah. You have to be able to create opportunities. And what that means is you have to understand different strategies. And I'll tell you, a huge part of my success and this group's success is being able to talk to the animals, understanding 
how to call, when to call, why to call, and to do things that where you're not necessarily hunting bugles. I will tell you this. Here is the secret, y'all. Are you ready? Here's the juice. If you can hunt silent elk, you can kill any elk. I hope you heard that. Amen. If you can hunt silent elk, you can kill any elk. Because if they start giving themselves away, they start communicating, shoot, your aces. But what do you do when they don't? You can still kill elk. They, they respond without talking so many times. And I want you to understand that. So if you want to know our playbook, it's knowing those types of things. And, I mean, you've heard about all of the areas that we've talked about. I'm not sure that we've covered everything in that, but you've heard an incredible conversation from a very successful group and why we're successful. You've heard the Elk Bros playbook. Absolutely, Joe. Yeah. Fantastic content. Uh, Bro, everything. before, well, I, I know you're getting ready to put take us out. You're so good sure, at it. But sure. I want to tell people out there, too, is, um, guys, uh, we're just about to our 100th episode. And we have done a ton to try to help you flatten that learning curve. You're letting us help you help yourself. And... Uh, we spend a lot of time doing this. We spend <laughs> we spend money doing this. Um, if you want to support what we're doing, uh, we would love if you would be proud to wear the Elk Bros gear out there and spread the word about this group and and about this podcast and about the things that we do because. W I got news for you. We believe in you. We know what you're capable of doing. And uh, uh, it, all we ask for you is go throw a review out there for us. Go ahead and rate us. Um, if you want to support what we're doing, go on our site and buy a T-shirt, buy a hat. If you um, really want to hear all of this stuff, go out and join our academy. You know, do those types of things. We are going to continue to do this. Oftentimes I worry how long I'll be able to do this without running out of things to say uh, for us to talk about. But, you know, I think um, even in repeating some of this, we're going to give you new nuggets along the way because there's so many things that we talk about. And there's so much. Chav, how, I mean, there's things that we take for granted so much, huh? You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's just, yeah, we can probably talk about the same thing 10 different times and, and get 10 different things out of it. So, yeah. because uh, again, I remember, yeah. Again, we never even talked about thermals in the wind tonight. And it's a huge part of our playbook and different yeah. things that we do with that. Uh, but we'll talk about that again another time. But I just wanted to let, you know, to put that out there to you guys to, that you've got special men here that are uh, taking time away. Um, from their day, from their families, because they're passionate about elk hunting and they're passionate about sharing with, it with you. Because when we share things in this world, all of us benefit because it becomes a better place, it becomes a better hunt. Um, it helps us as individuals and teaches us to pass things on to others. Be a mentor. Don't just take this and hold it to yourself. Grab somebody, a, a niece, a uh, nephew, yes. um, a sister a wife, uh, anybody, and if they have a passion for hunting, show them the way. Pass it on. You betcha. Well said. Man Manana, you got anything else you want to share before we close it out, brother? Thank you very much, Joe. And thank you very much, uh, Chav and, and Luis and Beto, for, for allowing me to be in this group. I'm, I'm honored. Well... We, we're honored to have you, brother. Uh, you know, you guys, you have heard a lot of, of what we talked about tonight on our playbook and everything. Uh, and, you know, uh, some of it's a little sappy and stuff like that, but we truly have a love for one another and we love hunting elk. Uh, it is it's genuine. It, it's genuine Absolutely. for sure. Uh, you, we've got some really cool things that we're going to probably start doing. So y'all keep looking, you know, I've already coined this phrase out. I want to put it out on Elk Bros Nation. Uh, Mafia Outdoors is, is on the <laughs> precipice right now. Uh, Mafia Productions and Mafia Outdoors is on its precipice right now. I mean, these guys are fantastic. 
freaking hunters, guys. Y'all have got to see some of the Absolutely. stuff these guys have put together. It'll be out on our site uh, in due time. I know uh, the the Venezuelan mafia is they are down to put it down uh, for us, and and I'm telling you, it was epic what I saw this weekend. I'm so proud of these guys. I'm proud of Joe for getting this group together and uh, having this platform at Elk Bros uh, to, so we can come out here and give it to you guys. You know, uh, If you like what we're doing, y'all please subscribe, rate, and review us. you got to go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes to review, and you can check out more elk hunting content at elkbros.com. And just a reminder, if any of our listeners would like their questions answered on our show, just send your questions to info at elkbros.com. That's info at elkbros.com. Amazing show tonight, Joe. Uh, from down here in the heartland of the big state of Texas to all of you guys in New Mexico, uh, we, we say this all the time. Husbands, kiss your wives. Wives, kiss your husbands. Hug your babies, keep your broad head sharp and your powder dry. And we'll see you next week right here on Blue Collar Elk Hunting. Amen. 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 Peace, peace.